Hey everybody out there in internet land, this is Pat from Imperial Wheeling Machines in Hastings, Nebraska. Today is Friday, January 17th, and uh, next Friday we have a class in the shop called Sports Car Body Construction. And some of the stir around that class, I get a lot of emails and a lot of questions about stuff. Had a gentleman with an aluminum bodied sports car that's got a giant high spot in the quarter panels. And I don't know if it's crash damage or a tire came apart. I really don't know, but uh, a conversation I had with him, I thought it would be worth sharing with you guys. So the entertaining thing about metal shaping is this is a thinking man's sport. If you want to swing a four pound hammer with authority to feel like a manly man, you're probably not doing a lot of productive things. I only know a couple people that can swing a hammer with authority and do something useful. So the rest of us have to do it smarter. And the guys that have been here for classes and people I've met at metal shaping get togethers and stuff, you know I get a little harpy on actions. <clears throat> and here, here's the world's worst tool sales pitch. We, we manufacture and sell a line of metal shaping stuff, but here's the world's worst tool sales pitch. If you understand the action that the metal sees, it doesn't matter what you use. So the gentleman with the, the big high spot in his aluminum bodied sports car was concerned about shrinking that down. And of course, the internet's advice is you have to anneal it. Uh, no. The problem, when you anneal it, you lose all the tension in the part. So if we've got a big old bump, and it's soft, and we tap on it, who says you aren't going to stretch it now that all the surface tension's gone? We want to take that bump and incrementally push it together. So you stop and think of a big bulbous fender or quarter panel, and a single hailstone falls out of the sky and you can watch it in slow motion, does it stretch or does it shrink first? I'll give you a second to think about that. Most people say that it stretches first. Well, you, you stop and think, here's your nice round fender and to push it flat, it has to go together to make a flat spot. So it has to shrink to get down to flat, then it has to stretch to make a concave dent. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna push that high spot down and we're gonna arrest it at that flat spot and no more. So we're standing here in front of a machine that I built and this is not to show off the machine. The simple reason we're doing it here is this machine has an absolutely fixed stroke. And I can do this with a hammer and a dolly very effectively, but I want to take the magic out of this. Some people, when they watch something happen with a hammer and a dolly, they stop and think, well, that's just years of practice and skill. Some, some things, yes, this, no. So forget that this is a machine. Forget that it's fancy. All we're using it for is a fixed stroke. You could do this in an arbor press, um, anything that provides a vertical squishing. So we're taking the magic out, we're just using the fixed stroke. So with a hammer, I would suggest you not swing it. Find a heavier body hammer that you have and just let the weight of the hammer drop. So you're taking the variable out of you swinging. So the lower die here is concave. And this is a concept, uh, the first guy I read about on forums and stuff that did it this way was a gentleman by the name of Daniel Gunderson. I, I don't know if that's how you actually pronounce his name, but he created a thing called a donut dolly. And that's the first reference I saw to it years ago on a forum. And that this is exactly what's gonna happen. That lower die being hollow gives it room to come down to the, the point of spring back 
and spring back too flat. You need to push it just past so the spring back comes back up to flat. So we've got a hollow die on the bottom. <clears throat> and how hollow is it? This could be just a piece of pipe with a nice radius on the edge. The interior of this die is not that important. All it needs to be is hollow. So what I'm going to use for an upper die is fairly flat. Come around here. A 18 inch radius upper die. Oh, that's bad marketing. Put the Imperial so you can read it. But an 18 inch upper die, you can use a dead flat upper die, but as much of this as I do, I want a low crown upper die to help push it down so it will spring back because the flat, you crush that bump and then all the flat is contacting. I want that little point to push it just past so it'll spring back to flat. So we'll put the die in the machine here. <clears throat> Tighten him up. <clears throat> and here's our test piece. Piece of aluminum with a fairly good lump in it. How much of a lump you say? Well, I'll grab a straight, something straight, as I fumble around. Well, we'll use the Allen wrench. So, you look, it's probably three-eighths, a skinny half inch, too high. So, this is the thing. We don't want to smash and crush it. We want to tickle it because that bump, there is far more structure to this bump than the rest of this part. So we want to take that top and just knock it down a little bit. Then we want to knock down the edge of the flat around that and so on and so on and so on. So I'll bring in here about die level so you can watch this. Little down periscope action here on the the tripod. I'll bring in here as close as I can get and still still work on it. Sorry for the shoddy camera work here but not a videographer. So okay. And we'll run the machine pretty slow, just so you can watch it. The speed of the strike does not matter. We're using the geometry of the bump to collapse itself. And I'm just working around the highest part there. And I'm going to come up with the, the lower die just a little bit and change the shut height. Okay, so we'll take a little pause for the cause here. And I'll show you the part again. So you can see there is a visible flat spot on that bump. Again, the bump has more structure than the rest of the panel. So we'll just continue changing our shut height to get him flatter and flatter and flatter. So again, I'm not doing this to show in the machine to show off the machine. I'm trying to take the magic out of if you saw me swinging a hammer, you'd think I'm doing it just so. Just think, this is a straight up and down, dumb mechanical squish.
all I'm doing is directing that squish. There's nothing magic, it's straight up and down. And I can run this machine faster, but again, I don't want it to look like magic. I want you guys to understand that that high spot is collapsing and shoving into itself. So, another little pause for the cause to show you how much flatter it is. Now look how large that flat spot is. It grew about an inch. So from where we were to that, and we'll take him down the rest of the way. Now, this is not gonna come out dead perfect. We're not gonna smoosh this down to dead perfect. You'll have to tune it back up because all we're doing is just shoving that extra surface back into itself. It's still gonna need a little tickle and tune to look like something useful. So that, that gentleman with the quarter panel, I was explaining to him that you may go to the point of the panel's just a little bit flat and you can hammer and dolly or use a, ha a slapper and a dolly and bring it back and blend that area all back together. Because again, you're not gonna shove this down to dead perfect and stand back and put your hands on your hips and marvel at your own amazement. It just, it's not gonna work that way. We can't make that much surface go away without a little bit of a finishing step. So, okay, another little pause for the cause here. <clears throat> so now look, we were three eighths to a skinny half inch tall, and now we're down about three sixteenths. So let's finish him off a little bit more. Bring him down flat to where we'd have to hammer and dolly a little bit to blend the surface back out. So that, that's the whole thing here guys that you'd be doing this by hand on the car with a hammer and a, and a, a donut dolly to get a hold of the surface and get rid of the goose egg and then you're going to take a, a hammer and a dolly or a slapper and a dolly and blend everything back out. <clears throat> okay. So you look how much of that bump we killed real quick. I can bring this on down and down and down, but the, the point is not to make this little scrap piece perfect again, it's to show you the concept. Because again, this is a thinking man sport. Now, I know somebody sitting out there watching this with their arms folded, and they say, okay, that's great, Mr. Fancy Pants, that's aluminum, but I work in steel. Well, same concept. If anything, it works a little better on steel because you've got more structure, more surface tension. It's a little bit easier on steel. It doesn't want to squirt out of the way. It's just enough stiffer. So even with a hammer and a dolly, you can get a very good result, you know, say on your muscle car, somebody heave hoed a jack into the end of the trunk and put a goose egg in the quarter panel. Well, same concept. Just mind your P's and Q's 
And remember, this is not fancy. We are just crushing the high spot and crushing him into himself. So you look, piece of 18 gauge steel, same effect. So, <clears throat> hope you guys found that, found that useful. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, you can fire them off down in the comments, shoot us an email, uh, imperialwheel at yahoo.com. And you want to check out our classes and other stuff that we offer, you can, you can see that stuff on our website, wheelingmachines.com. So again, guys, this is not about the tool. Look at the action. If you understand the action, it doesn't matter what you use, if you can repeat that action. So <clears throat> hope that helps a few of you guys out there, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Oh, remember to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. See you later.